The pocket guides are meant to be clinical decision support guides in a number of topics that help anyone caring for patients uh, find information rapidly. We have an antibiotic guide that we refer to in shorthand as the ABX guide, the guide centered on HIV care and management, uh, diabetes care and management, as well as a comprehensive psychiatry guide. A large number of people find the guides very useful, both generalists and specialists. Uh, for example, uh, hospitalists, uh, primary care clinicians, mid-level providers, but also subspecialists, including infectious disease specialists, endocrinologists, and psychiatrists, all find the information easily accessible and helpful for their care. Additionally, uh, medical students have often found the guide very helpful for educational purposes on all aspects of care related to the guides. Infectious disease and regular pharmacists have found that the drug information is quite detailed and very helpful in providing additional uh, guidance for uh, treating patients. The guides come in a number of formats that help you take care of patients in any number of clinical contexts, for example, on desktops, tablets. I personally use it quite frequently on my phone, both in the outpatient clinics as well as I'm attending on the inpatient wards. It allows me to quickly find information on either diagnosis or management, drug selections or drug interactions, often in under a minute, and then back out and continue caring for the patient with minimal interruptions. Pocket guides are all structured in a similar way where you will find information about diagnosis, pathogens, uh, drugs, and management. Uh, these are all quite easy to use, whether you like to do typing in search terms or uh, drilling into uh, topics uh, via a very easy to use navigation. And all this is meant to try to yield information no matter what the purpose in under a minute so that you can return to caring for your patients on a real-time basis. So the guides are all written by clinicians or clinical pharmacists and are all subject to academic peer review as well as periodic updating so you can feel confident the information you're looking at is timely. We'll update some topics more frequently, especially in fast-moving items such as Ebola, MERS, or influenza. And then on others, when, for example, seminal studies or guidelines are issued that will really alter care. I often use a pocket guide in a number of circumstances. Sometimes I don't remember the particular dose of a drug that I use very commonly or want to adjust it for renal function. Other times it may be I am concerned about a more rare diagnosis that I don't encounter very easily or frequently. So, for example, botulism. So I might just look up the information on botulism so I can look up some of the key clinical features. I'd also find out that you can order certain tests. And then, uh, even though I thought maybe antibiotics were required, I find out that antibiotics are in fact contraindicated for most forms of botulism. So all that information is there in a very linked way so I can flip between modules and if I needed to give antibiotics I can then just link over to the particular drug module. Some of the more popular and uh, possibly unique features of the pocket guides are that there are drug specific comments which are really the clinicians take informally on some of the pluses and minuses of choosing a drug in any given situation. Also, there are key references given in every given topic with those references linked to PubMed so you can find the articles easily. But importantly, there's usually a brief annotation where the authors will describe why they think this is an important reference to include.